you've got questions, we've got answers. Tune in Tuesdays at 12 on Facebook Live and Instagram Live, where we will be hosting a variety of community experts that will answer your questions. I'm Josh Levin, president of Live the Divas. Come join us as we talk about how my sister started this company, as well as ways to improve your quality of life. See you then. Since we're streaming, so I'm just gonna get right going on this because we're so excited about this show. Look, I've got pen in hand, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Jillian. I'm Michelle. And welcome to Tip Tuesday. And as you know, or may not know, this month is National Lymphedema Month. So we have with us today, the wonderful, the knowledgeable, the supportive, the incredible, I can't wait for you all to meet him, Josh Levin. He is the owner of Lymphedivas. He is with us today. He is here to chat with us about his story and how to navigate life with lymphedema, uh, with lymphedema. So I just want to say, Josh, hi, we're so excited to get to you. Oh, it is such a pleasure to be here and cannot wait to start talking with you guys about everything. Yay. Thank awesome. you. But Michelle, as always, because we have something really amazing going on. So would you do our housekeeping up front? Absolutely. Um, as you all may or may not know, Lymphed Divas is a very mm -hmm. generous company and they have an amazing giveaway. Uh, all you have to do is comment during the show and under this post with your favorite color or sleeve pattern for a chance to win a $150 gift certificate good for any product on the Lymphedivas website. And the winner will be announced next week during our Tip Tuesday show. Plus, from now until March 21st, you can use discount code BEAUTY21 for 15% off any purchase on their website. And that's lymphedivas.com. So please check it out. There's beautiful patterns. And thank you so much, Josh. You're welcome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, well, I'm ready. People are jumping on. People love you. Cindy says, hi, Josh. Cindy Papel. Uh, hi, Cindy. Yeah. People <laughs> are jumping on to see their Josh. Lo Josh love. So, Josh, let, I want to get right into it and say, for those out there who don't know what lymphedema is, can you explain it? Sure. So lymphedema as a whole is, you know, the lymphatic system is part of your body's venous system. So you've got your veins, your arteries, and then there's a third piece of it, which is the lymphatic. Uh, so the problem is that when you have breast cancer, uh, which is what we're going to sort of focus in on for this conversation, you end up during the diagnosis phase with the removal of lymph nodes. So you are taking pieces of this system out. Uh, if you follow that through with radiation therapy as well, now you are further irradiating that area and potentially further damaging the parts of that system. Now, unlike the veins and the arteries, which, you know, it's, it's roads. We get what happens when a road gets blocked. With lymphedema, it's a little less clear. And so in general, what we understand is your body is producing like this amount of lymphatic fluid. And before all of the damage and destruction to the system, you're able to move this amount of fluid out, out of, let's say, your arm. Now your nodes are starting to become removed. You've got radiation therapy. All of a sudden, that threshold, that amount of fluid that your body is producing is now more than it can move out. And so you get a buildup of this lymphatic fluid in the arm or the leg or the chest or the breast, it just starts to expand. And the idea is early education so that you understand what it is. You can talk to your doctor or your therapist, get ahead of it early because the more it pro progresses, the more difficult it can be in to, to bring it back and get to an arm and a quality of life that you really want to have. Okay, so I wanted to set the stage. Everyone's saying hi, I love it, Victoria. Hi, Victoria. Wanted to set the stage because there are a lot who suffer and a lot that don't know what it is. And now I want to talk about what you've done, your beautiful work, how you make us all feel beautiful. And I know that your company has a story and a very heartfelt story. So if you could tell us a little bit about how Lymphedeva came to be, like, what is the story behind it? Absolutely. Because it wasn't something that I started. It's something that I have continued, but this, this wasn't something that was my idea, my business, my, my goal and my mission. It was my sister's. So my sister, Rachel, uh, was diagnosed with uh, stage three breast cancer, triple negative, back in the summer of 2005. Uh, I actually was overseas at the time. Uh, I had found out via a phone call 
uh, on a weekend when I had access to electricity and phones and was told about it. And I couldn't go home, but I'm sure many of you have understood this and been there. And my sister was saying, well, you can't help me at all. You need to do what you do and live your life. Come back to me once this, once you are back. Uh, I've got my support here. And so that was hard for me, but for her, obviously it was much harder. And a few months after she finished her treatment, um, they had actually removed 19 lymph nodes uh, from her and she had radiation. Um, and so, you know, all of this was very tough on her body. And a couple of months after she finished her treatment, she started feeling heaviness in her arm. So she didn't see a difference. It just felt wrong. And she was being treated at University of Pennsylvania uh, Hospital, where at that time, uh, Dr. Andrea Cheville was working, who was one of the leaders in lymphedema medicine as a uh, physiatrist. And so she immediately knew what it was, accepted it, diagnosed it, and sent her with a prescription to get her first sleeve. Now, this is back in 2006, and there, there were no options back then. You know, you got medical beige. It didn't matter what color skin you had. You got this really ugly beige color that really doesn't match anybody, especially if you are of any other non-medically beige-ish skin tone. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it was in this thick, heavy, ugly, coarse fabric. And my sister was an athlete. And, you know, she's looking at this and reflecting on what this is going to make her feel the rest of her life if she's got to wear this. And had asked the person at the pharmacy, you know, don't you have anything else? You know, well, there's other manufacturers, but really they all make this one thing. No one's doing anything else. There's no other colors. You know, there really isn't a, a different fabric that's more comfortable. And so my sister, Rachel, and another woman, Robin Miller, who my sister was uh, 35 when she was first diagnosed. And so another woman who was 25, Robin Miller, the two of them were sitting waiting to talk to Dr. Chevelle. And they said, you know, there isn't something for us. Let's make something that we'd actually want to wear. And so that was the first step of Lymphedivas uh, is what can we do to this thing, this medical device to make it so we wouldn't mind putting it on and we wouldn't feel bad about having to wear it. And so they wanted to make them stylish. They wanted colors. Uh, we didn't even have a skin tone when we launched because that's not what she wanted. Um, but then we got calls. Can we have a skin tone? You know, I don't want it to stand out. It's like, yeah, I guess so. Because while my sister didn't want it, others do. And this is where it all comes in, where lymphedivas is about choice and empowering people to get agency over their disease and make decisions for themselves about what they're willing to do and what works for them. And that's really what Lymphedivas did by coming into this market and provide this garment was to say, it doesn't have to be this way. It can be different. Find what works for you and what makes you happy. That's amazing. And um, your sister passed, correct? She passed? She did. Uh, unfortunately, only about a year and a half after she started Lymphedivas, mm -hmm. her cancer metastasized and within a few months it was over. Um, but literally on her deathbed, she asked my father to take over from her. Uh, and he, it was almost like his whole career led up to this. He had done medical research in immunology. Uh, then he went into practicing medicine for rheumatology and internal medicine. And then he did medical management, uh, consulting for business. And so everything just sort of lined up for, let me understand what we know about lymphedema, what we don't, so that I can make this product as good as it can be and bring all of my business knowledge to help bring the business into a profitable business. Um, and I had joined a couple of years after he had started and the two of us ran it together until my father passed away last year. Uh, so, you know, this really is Rachel's legacy and my family's legacy. And that, so that's how beautiful. I treat it. Yeah. yeah, and you do. And you're such a, just, we hadn't met you until we kind of, you know, talked before this call and you guys were so gracious and said, sure, I'll come on Tip Tuesday, let's do it. And just the way you bring that joy out and everything you say it's just amazing. It's just such a beautiful story. And it's a, it's not, I don't like to say it's sad and I'm sorry. What I want to say is, oh my God, what it a is. family, what a legacy. <laughs> this is amazing. Life, some, you know, life throws, sh sorry, I'm careful. They'll cut it out. Life <laughs> throws things at us. And it's, you know, what you've done with this is beautiful. So thank you for continuing to share and thank you for sharing with us. And, and there are some questions and I have questions for you. So I'm going to keep going. Absolutely. Um, Cin Cindy has a question that I actually did not have in my little notes here. And I think it's a really valid question. How do you know what size sleeve to get? 
So we've got sizing charts uh, like everybody else has sizing charts. So you, that gives you an idea of what happens. Um, you know, so ultimately what's most important is that these sleeves manage your edema. And they generally do that by one overall increasing the pressure inside the arm mm -hmm. so that the little one-way valves and the lymph nodes, it's easier for them to work. And the second piece is that they're graduated so that the further point, you know, down by the wrist, if you're wearing an arm sleeve, this is the highest amount of compression. And then it gets less as you move up the arm. Mm -hmm. Things like to move from high pressure environments to low pressure. That's a general law of physics. And so by introducing that, that graduation of compression, it helps promote that flow back in. So by looking at the size ranges, it gives you an idea of, all right, should this be doing what it's supposed to be doing? Um, and that's really the best way to start of understanding. If you're in between ranges, you can call us. We've got some more tools and some more information that can help guide us to help you figure out what size is the best for you. But really, and ultimately what this is about is, when you put it on, does it work? Is it comfortable? Will you actually wear this? Uh, you know, so if I say you need, you should be wearing X and you put it on and you're just like, oh God, no, nope, this is going to stay in my drawer. Right. It's going to stay in your drawer. It's not going to do you any good. So right. it's all about finding what is comfortable. So the sizing is one piece, but ultimately it's about, is it effective? Okay, and we do, and we have one of our friends and designers on deck. She's going to come in in a minute, but I just, before she jumps in, I wanted to ask you, is there anything that we should be avoiding in life? Because, you know, they don't, the doctors really don't tell us a lot about lymphedema. They just don't. They'll say, be careful. Don't overuse the arm. Is there any real things that we should be avoiding if we suffer from lymphedema? That is a really good and incredibly difficult question to answer. Okay. Um, and that's okay. And it's okay for it to be difficult. And I think it's why a lot of the doctors kind of talk about it in softer terms, um, because that's the only thing that they have. They're, if you look online and look up research studies about lymphedema and risk factors, you'll see that there are a lot of conflicting studies out there. There are, you can point to studies that say, you know, an activity like going into a hot tub is a bad idea that raises your overall body temperature. Raised temperature of your limbs means more capillary flow, which can mean more swelling. But if hot tubs and based on your reaction are really important to you and, and bring you joy and you haven't seen an issue, then that's something that you have to weigh personally. I can't tell you not to do something or to do something because nothing is going to be if you avoid it, it means you're not going to get lymphedema. And there's nothing that says if you do it, you absolutely are going to get it. Everything is about a decision of what works for your own quality of life. And that's, that makes it hard because it, it means that there isn't something that you can definitely do or not do to help manage this. It's more about understanding and learning the things that might affect it and affect you and affect your well-being, both physical and mental, and then deciding what am I willing to do to help reduce my risk. So be careful within reason and just be the best judge of yourself you can be is what you're yes. saying. And, okay. and on our website, we do have some entries and some pages up that, that go around some of the more well-known risks that are out there. We know whether or not it's a risk that, that you feel like you need to mitigate or handle, that's a separate discussion between you, yourself, your doctor, your therapist, you know, talking about it to figure out all right, what does this mean to me? And that's really what lymphedema is. It's a personal disease and mm -hmm. figuring out how you're going to manage it, how you're going to live with it and what you're going to do. They're all personal decisions. Okay. So, you know, at Beautiful Self, we, our whole thing is that we feel that every survivor and fighter deserves to feel beautiful in her now self, like the now self. And which is why we love you guys so much and are so attracted to you. And I always wanted to partner with you and, and, and talk about you is because you, that's the whole premise is you took something really not beautiful and very medicinal and you gave it beauty. And we are going to bring on Marianne who has designed for you, but in general, yeah, we all, everyone loves Marianne. I'm wearing a Marianne sleeve, Marianne Decosset, my, my faves. Um, but how do you guys in general, before we get to Marianne, how do you come up with your, these gorgeous, gorgeous designs? Like, how do you do it? We have artists. Uh, we have, we have artists on staff. Um, and what's funny is that both of the artists that we have, we're both 
trained artists, but they both started off in the production crew here, uh, putting the patterns on sleeves, helping get them out the door, all of that. Uh, Anna Sokolowski, who's my creative and marketing director, that was how she began. And she actually designed our first in-house designed pattern, uh, which was for Living Beyond Breast Cancer and the Young Survival Coalition. Uh, they used to put on an, a conference together. And that was the first one that we did and it became one of our best sellers. And we were like, wait a second, we can do this. And so Anna started looking up, you know, what's, what's going on in the design world? What are the clothing stores doing, you know, both in terms of higher fashion and more everyday fashion? What are people looking for? And it's, we really have to have a wide net because we cover people all over the world and yes. everyone's got different things that they like. And that's, that's also why we have so many patterns. Uh, you know, we, we really amazing. need to try and accommodate, but we also know that we can't have too many patterns, then it's overwhelming. And so it, it's a tough balance, but we've got her, a, another woman, Jill Gustavus, who works with uh, Anna now um, and who also started in production here. Uh, the two of them are two phenomenal artists. Jill does most of our designs now for the sleeves um, and does a lot of work in watercolor and drawing and then converts that to digital and puts them on the garments. Uh, just, so, I want to remind everyone, because everyone is commenting, that the quality of the sleeve is unbelievable. This is not just, oh, isn't it pretty? The quality is beautiful, but it's so soft and the designs are so clear. And you know, I remember as um, that when I first started wearing them years ago, I wasn't seeing a lot of, you know, the the designs out. People would be like, oh my God, do you have an arm sleeve? Like tat, and then you'd be like, oh wait, up close. Like, you felt edgy, <laughs> you felt cool wearing it, even though you didn't feel cool, you know, with what was going on. So right. I do want to say that one of your artists that you've used is also a beautiful self-alumna. She is just incredible. Uh, we, we're we always asking to talk to her. We love her. Her name's Marianne D. Cosette. For anyone that doesn't know her, some in the chat are like, yay, Marianne. She does, she's such a distinctive artist. Her designs are so beautiful. Marianne, I've loved wearing your sleeves. They've just been just so joyous and so beautiful. You know, it's so distinctive. And we're so, we're glad you popped in to say hi. So thank you. You're on mute, Marianne. <laughs> You gotta unmute her. There. You there? All right. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Marianne. We just wanted to ask you, because um, we're kind of chatting about designs. How do you come up with some of your gorgeous, gorgeous designs? Like, how do you? What? Yay! <laughs> how do you come up with them? Yeah. Well. I do my art every day and, and I hope I'm clear. Am I coming out clear? It's okay. A little. Okay. Um, it's, you know, with, with Margaret, I do it every day. And then when it was, you know, the theme was we wanted to get, you know, a female body on, on, on the sleeve. Um, I like adore Jill's work. I like love her watercolors and she's something in her design, all the designs that came up. So I wanted to do something that was a little different than what you, you know, it was normally. And we did this one, we uh, collaborated with Metaviver and I wanted, everyone loves a mermaid. So the mermaid came out one, but it was more like these to use um, birds and flowers and things that I use in my, my typical, I always put a heart in my art and I was able to do mm -hmm. that. And it came up, you know, it, it comes up organically. I don't know, it just, uh, it works. It just does. And, and it does, and something for me that with, with the, and I've said this before, that when I got these sleeves, it was like such a breakthrough for me because I was in the lowest point when I was diagnosed after being diagnosed with everything else. And going through the therapy, and I'm sure you discussed this, it's like when you went through the therapy and being wrapped and having to go through it, I was like, oh, I have to do this now? Like I have to, after all this, I still have to do this? And then knowing I waited for the door to the mailbox to be open so I could open up, you know, my first peacock <laughs> lymphedema sleeve. And it was, it changed everything. Cause it was like, all of a sudden I was like, wait, I can make this into something really beautiful. And you know, and I love that you say that because, and Josh, I, I want to just go back and, and talk to both of you. And it's, I think that what a lot of people don't understand is like, not only you're dealing with everything, but then you go, you guys understand this. You go back to your closet once you have it. And all of a sudden the, the shirts that you had that had sleeves, I was a size four 
but now I'm a size six, eight on one side. So you can't cut jackets in half and wear a four and an eight. It just, and nothing would fit in the, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I have to wear everything sleeveless now, but it's so awful. So I remember in relation to what you're saying, my first lymphedema sleeve was a hummingbird and hummingbirds have been, you know, told I, that's my spirit animal. And I do love hummingbirds. And to wear that, it felt like I was dressed again. I didn't feel dressed before because nothing, it's just nothing fit. I had to rethink everything. And art is so healing. And to wear a piece of art that means something is just so healing. It's just, it's hard to explain, right? Unless you go you through it. You walked into the studio that day with your new lymphedema on like a different woman, actually. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't the same medicinal beige that I had been wearing. Uncomfortable. You know, yeah. I remember people saying, oh, I just thought you were maybe a left-handed tennis player because the left arm was so much bigger. Uh -huh. you no, know, not really figuring it out um, because no, no one, people in the community uh, understand it, but people outside of the community don't really know what lymphedema is. They don't really no. understand it. So, and they confuse it with lymphoma. Like they get very confused on the words and things like that. So having that wearable art is, um, it's huge, it's huge. And so Marianne, thank you because you know, your art is, is so therapeutic and so healing. And I love following you and watching your adventures. And you did a piece of me on me. I just loved it. Your art is beautiful and to watch you do it and post about it, you know, and then to actually get a sleeve that's so signature you yeah. like this one, it's just beyond the, it's beyond the beyond. Thank so, you. so thank you. Thank you so Mr. much Pat, for doing I'm like, for just for being you and for always popping in to say hi on our chats. We love you. <laughs> Thank you. We love you. We love you. That's, that's what we wanted to know. We just want to get a little inspiration in your and your fabulous self for a few minutes. So thank you for popping in with us. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Marianne. Marianne. Great seeing you again. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So Josh, as we kind of, we, 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 we're flip-flopping a lot. That's mm -hmm. me too, kind of between the beauty of it, the reality of it, the beauty of it, the reality of it. I do want to remind everyone that's watching to just comment on your favorite color or your favorite pattern, and you will be automatically entered to an $150 gift certificate to Lymphedivas, which is so worth it. Oh my God. And they're going to be offering a special discount code for a limited amount of time. So now's the time to do your shopping. And we're, we've been putting that up all week. We will announce the winner next week. All you have to do is just pop in a color or a design. So um, Josh, and saying that back and forth, to get more serious again, what are the real dangers to our bodies uh, when we have lymphedema? So, I mean, the, the biggest is leaving it untreated. Uh, that, that really is your largest danger that you are creating for yourself. Uh, you know, by leaving it untreated, it's going to increase in stage and get increases, increasingly large and give potentially more risk for instances of cellulitis, which you've been through and can be life-threatening if they continue. So, you know, the, the hardest thing I think with lymphedema is in one, recognizing it and getting it treated early and then Secondly, realizing that you have to look at things and a lot of things very differently as it's not just about, do I want to do this? It's all right. Do I want to do this? And is there something about this that I might be putting myself or my limb at risk? And that's, that's that thing that I was talking about earlier where there isn't clear guide, guidance and we're, we're living in a world without clear guidance for a lot of things right now. And this is just another thing, but unlike COVID that we're dealing with, which is most likely going to be a relatively short-term thing, lymphedema is a lifetime. And this isn't, oh, I've got to deal with this for a year or two. It's, I am either at risk for potentially getting it for decades, or I've got it, and now I've got to manage this for the rest of my life. And that is probably one of the hardest things to manage because it's a psychological issue, not just a physical one. Can it be, um, have you ever seen it reversed? So there are doing some surgeries now. Uh, and there's still, you know, even though it's been several years since the first surgeries have, have been going on, uh, you know, either doing microsurgeries of either transplanting lymph nodes or changing the pathways within them, uh, 
there are good things happening with them. Um, it looks, it, it is looking like a lot of people are having positive results. Uh, it does not mean that you don't have to wear a sleeve when you're done. Uh, so the sleeve wearing is still going to be a part of this, but it's more about reducing the size of the limb uh, and helping to improve the overall flow. But the sleeve wearing remains part of management afterwards. Uh, but they're, they are doing a lot of new things. You know, if, uh, if you look at the Lymphatic Education and Research Network, LEARN, uh, they're supporting a lot of research out there and they're a great resource to find out what is going on with regards to lymphatic research, either about the lymphatic system itself or the ways of treating. Uh, but they're, they are doing some really amazing work right now. Uh, things are still generally in the future for probably real change, but they're starting and have started. And right. that's incredible. At the end of the day, I would love to not have to make sleeves anymore. Yeah. Uh, you know, that is my, my goal is not to sell as many sleeves as I can for the rest of my life. That, yeah. that is not my goal. My goal is really to have to say to myself, oh crap, I've got to figure out something else to sell. Uh, what do I do now? My, it's cured. my market is gone. Uh, yay! Yes. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I have a question from Sally. And she said she's a, she's a, 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 a three-year um, triple negative breast cancer survivor. And she, this month, congratulations, Sally. And she wants to know if hot flashes, cause you know, they never end for us. Um, if that affects the lymphedema. And I can safely say that I don't know. Good um, question. Yeah. And, and I am totally okay saying I don't know to things. Uh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, our community knows out there. So. Yeah. yeah and, and it's okay to not know things. Uh, it means that you're going to go find out what it actually is. Uh, but this one I'm, I'm really not sure about. I, uh, I, I don't know if a hot flash raises your own internal temperature or if it's more of an external feeling. Um, but I would talk with your doctor. Uh, you know, you can find lymphedema trained therapists out there. Those are folks that, that, that you can also talk with. Um, but I would, I would go to someone who specializes in lymphedema to clarify that. Uh, and, you know, of course, doing your own research is always a good idea. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry, I, I can't give you a definitive answer on whether or not a hot flash effects or fair enough interact. and everybody by the way sally is sending you hearts and love for having like the, being on your three-year anniversary um okay so as we kind of close out would you say that there's any common myths or misconceptions around lymphedema oh there's so many and that's part okay. of the problem um and this goes back to what i was saying before where i'm i'm okay saying that i don't know uh, and I think historically, a lot of doctors haven't been. Um, over the past 10 years that I've been running the company, I have seen changes. You know, I have seen doctors be more open, surgeons explaining it, uh, where before they used to say, oh, the way that I cut, there's no lymphedema. Um, you know, don't even come in and show me your larger arm. You don't have lymphedema. My patients don't get it. Oh, so I'm hearing a lot <laughs> less of that, which is good. But, you know, there, there are a lot of myths out there around specifically assessments on what these garments are doing, what exact garment you need, what level of compression you need. All of that is much more fluid than some people like to make it out to be. And so really what it comes down to is this really is personal. The disease is personal. You know, the doctors aren't going to be sure exactly how the damage is going to affect your body when they take out the lymph nodes. They're not going to be sure how you're going to react. Um, all of that is going to be finding tools that work for you afterwards, finding what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do, what you're willing to wear, what you're not willing to wear. But anytime someone says this is an absolute with regards to this, I would question that. Uh, they might be right because um, there are some, but really the majority of things here are much looser. And it is really more about you finding what works for you and makes okay. you happy. Any advice for someone going through this? Um, find a, a trained lymphedema therapist. That is going to be your, your biggest help. Uh, and, you know, if you have just had surgery or are currently in treatment, talking to your doctor about the potential risk and, uh, and getting educated around lymphedema. We have an education book on our website that you can download for free. Uh, but really, it's all about asking questions and being aware. The more aware you are, the more you're going to get ahead of it. And that's really the goal here. 
Thank you so much. And, you know, I do want to remind everyone because if, if, we, if we don't get any questions that we can't answer, the Lymphedipa website has so much information on it. And, and there, everyone there is so helpful. You have such an amazing group. Your sleeves are absolutely stunning. They're, they work, they're soft, they're gorgeous. They make you feel better. So please, I, I enter the contest. I can't, we're going to announce who wins next week. And we also, there is a discount code that's going to go for a short amount of time because this company has such a big heart and we love working with them. And Josh, I know this is our first time really talking to you, but I can see why I got so many messages. Everyone's like, you're working with Joshy. He's going to, you're going to love him. You're going to love him. Legendary. Yeah, legendary. <laughs> Everyone was like, you're going to, and you know, I can see why you are amazing. You're so humble. You're so knowledgeable. You're so kind. And it's just really beautiful what you and your family have done. So thank, thank you. you. Well, really. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for everything that, that y'all are doing as well. That, you know, the, what I'm doing is only a piece of this and what you were doing is another huge piece. So thank you too. Oh, thank you, Josh, so much. And we're going to go back and we're going to talk to everybody later and we'll go through the chats. And I certainly hope this isn't the last time we have you. I don't think it will be. <laughs> Yay, we want you back. We already want you back. <laughs> we're like, get him back. You are amazing. So everyone, thank you so much who joined in. As always, you know what we're going to leave you with. Stay strong. Stay positive. You are beautiful. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Take care, Bye, Josh. Bye. Bye. Bye.